There's an intrinsic connection between the ride pattern and various styles of music, especially in jazz and other forms related to the music that we call jazz. If we go back into the early 1930s, we know that uh, the sound of the hi-hat, especially the early sounds, were quite clipped. But as we move to the ride cymbal, that sound, that particular sound uh, and style carried over. More traditional sounding players, a uh, player like uh, Louis Belson, for instance, and even others a little bit later on, like Jimmy Cobb, still maintained, uh, in many cases, a very clipped sound, or somewhat clipped sound, in their ride pattern. And of course, the ride pattern relates directly to the comping patterns. A more loose triplet based uh, ride pattern, something that we might hear from uh, Art Blakey or Elvin Jones, would sound like this. Even a little faster tempo. A bit later, certain players like Roy Haynes and ultimately players like Tony Williams began to uh, flatten out the sound of the ride pattern and uh, make it sort of a straight eighth pattern. And finally, as we move into more hybrid styles, fusion, the style that we call ECM, uh, really a combination perhaps of Latin, a little bit of rock, and, uh, and certainly jazz, uh, we begin to see uh, the ride pattern distributed around the kit, in, uh, usually in straight eighth notes. Through all this, we know that the choice of sticks is very important so that the clarity of the time uh, is there. Whether it's the clipped sound of the 1930s and 40s, whether it's a more uh, broad sound that we hear from players like Blakey or Elvin Jones, Roy Haynes with a more straightened out uh, eighth note sound, certainly Tony Williams and his wonderful playing, or moving into more contemporary players, Jack DeJanet, Jan Christensen, and so forth. Stick choice, the tip choice, very, very important in all of these uh, players' decisions about how they play, what they play, and what they use as far as sticks.